You are welcome back to Learn with SOS. My name is Steve Sebastian Ousu, KNU University School of Business, and today I'm honored to walk you through conditional statements that is necessary and sufficient conditions in logic and critical thinking LCT 162. That is one of the areas that students find it like trying to bend the sea or trying to square the circle. Sometimes it's very difficult to distinguish between what conditions are necessary and what conditions are sufficient. But we are going to see how best we can draw the distinction or ten line. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe for more wonderful content like this. Now let's begin with what a conditional statement is. A conditional statement is simply of the form if then, or we call if then statements. We are seeing conditional statements are of the form if then. Doesn't mean every conditional statement should begin with if and flow with when. Some statements you won't see them but the underlying assumption is that you will see a cause and an effect you will see something bringing something an example if it rains i won't go to class you can see that one part of the sentence is resulting in the other so on that note we can divide a conditional statement into two parts the first part let's call it a the second part let's call it b now if it rains is the cause people call it stimulus and other people call it the independent variable or independent and i won't go to class is the effect or people call it the response or the dependent so you can see that if it rains bring about i won't go to class so every conditional statement has a cause and an effect side or a stimulus and a response side or an independent and a dependent side. Now, the cause of any conditional statement is called antecedent and the effect is called the consequent. The effect connotes well with the consequence because the result or effect of anything we do is the consequence so an example if i go to class it's resulting in i will vomit i know some of us we don't like going to class the moment we enter the class he will vomit i know now if i go to class is the antecedent that is the condition the condition is the one that brings the other I will vomit is the consequence of you going to class so every conditional statement you come across try to know the antecedent and the consequence don't forget the antecedent is the condition that is the part that results or bring about the consequence or the other part of the condition now this brings us to the two forms of conditional statements or the two forms of conditions that is where it becomes more trickier now when do we say a condition is sufficient a condition is said to be sufficient if it is enough to make something happen the word enough here means that it is not the only thing that can make that thing happen. I take it again. A condition is sufficient if it is just enough. That means there are other things that can make the same thing happen. For example, if I urinate on the wall, it will get wet. If I pour water on the wall, it will get wet. If it rains on the wall, it will get wet. So you see, there are so many things you and I can do that can get the same wall getting wet. That is what we call a sufficient condition. Let's look at an example here. 
Pushing on the gas is enough to make the car move forward. So when, when you get in the car and, and, and you push the gas or the accelerator, the car will move forward. Now, is that the only way the car can move forward? No. A car can come from the back, hit the back of the car, it will move forward. A macho man can push the car, it will move forward. So you see, there are so many ways the car can go forward apart from you pushing or pressing the gas. That is how sufficient condition works. That is how they look like. They, they look like. So if you have a condition and there are other alternatives or there are other ways that result in the same effect, then we have what we call a sufficient condition. Now, let's take note of the following things about sufficient conditions. One, they are many to one. They are many to one because many things, many conditions can result in the same thing. Like the example I, I, I cited. When you pour water on the water to get wet, when you urinate on the water to get wet, when it rains, it will, it will still get wet. So, so many things can result in the same thing. That is many to one. And also, sufficient conditions not all the time but most of the times moves from a specific observation to a general observation an example being a brother is a sufficient condition to being a male the question is is being a brother alone the only way to identify someone as a male it's a big no one being a husband makes you a male. Being a boyfriend makes you a male. Being an uncle makes you a male. Being a father makes you a male. Being a mister makes you a male. So you see, there are so many things that can make someone a male. So being a brother is just one of the many reasons for someone to be identified or described as a male. Therefore, being a brother is a sufficient condition to being a male. So now let's establish the fact that the moment a lot of conditions can result in the same thing, those conditions are what we call sufficient conditions. Now let's move on to necessary conditions, that is the opposite of sufficient condition now a condition is said to be necessary if it is the only thing now i take it again if it is the only thing that can cause something to happen in other words there are no other ways to make that thing happen example being a female is a necessary condition to being a mother Ask us, let's ask ourselves. Apart from being a female, is there any other way that you can be called a mother? Can we have something aside being a female that can qualify to be a mother? Let's think through. No. Being a female is the only way to describe as a mother. So that's why we say that being a female is a necessary condition to being a mother. So a necessary condition is the only thing that will make something happen or true. Now, let's take note of the following about necessary condition. They are one to one. That means only one condition can result in the cause sorry only one condition can result in the effect only one thing can result in the other thing and generally not all the time necessary condition moves from a, a general observation to a specific observation example being a student in Kane University School of Business is a necessary condition to reading business administration in Kenya. 
apart from being a student in KNY School of Business, is there any other way that can make you read business administration in KNYST? No. Because the moment you are a student of KNU West School of Business, automatically, whether you like it or not, you are reading business administration in KNUST. That's why we say that being a student in KNUST School of Business is a necessary condition to reading business administration. So at this juncture, we should know that with sufficient conditions, there are other ways to make the same thing happen. But with necessary conditions, there is only one thing that results in the other thing. On that note, there is our assignment to help us understand the, 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 the thin line or the difference between necessary condition and sufficient condition. So you can, you can see that the same statement you can turn it to be necessary, you can turn it to be sufficient. Now, I'll be glad if you will answer this assignment for me. Check the description box, you'll see my number or email. Contact me on WhatsApp or through my email and let's discuss the answers. Let's do one or two of these assignments.